The transcription of individual genes can be turned on or off in response to a variety of signals from inside and outside the cell. These signals enable the cell to adjust levels of RNA and the translated protein in response to changing conditions. Most genes are regulated by proteins that bind to the chromosome in the vicinity of the transcribed gene. Specific regions in the chromosome called regulatory sequences are the sites in the DNA to which regulatory proteins bind. Regulatory sequences are most commonly located upstream of the promoter and can be immediately adjacent to the promoter or even overlapping or can be many kilobases away. A gene might be regulated by a single protein or by several different proteins that bind to distinct sites within the regulatory sequence. Regulatory proteins that decrease the rate of transcription initiation are termed repressors, while proteins that increase transcription are called activators. In eukaryotic cells, the proteins that bind to regulatory sequences do not regulate transcription on their own. Instead, they recruit protein complexes that influence the rate at which the target gene is transcribed. Complexes that increase transcription are called co-activators, while complexes that suppress transcription are called co-repressors. We will now examine the example of steroid hormone receptors to see how an extracellular signal can give rise to a change in transcription. The signalling molecules sensed by these receptors include the sex hormones oestrogen and testosterone, as well as cortisol, which is secreted in response to stress. Because of their hydrophobic nature, these hormones can pass through membranes into the cell, where they bind directly to proteins known as nuclear receptor proteins. Nuclear receptor proteins contain an N-terminal DNA binding domain that recognises specific DNA sequences and a C-terminal ligand binding domain which binds the hormone. Hormone binding can affect the nuclear receptor in different ways depending upon the particular nuclear receptor and the hormone. Some nuclear receptors are normally found in the cytoplasm in complex with HSP90, a chaperone protein. When a hormone such as estradiol is present in the cell, it binds to the ligand binding domain of the nuclear receptor, inducing a conformational change. This change causes HSP90 to dissociate. The nuclear receptor can now translocate into the nucleus and bind to DNA sequences known as hormone response elements. The DNA binding domain recognises the hormone response element, while the ligand binding domain recruits a coactivator complex that activates the downstream gene. Some types of nuclear receptor are always found in the nucleus and are capable of binding DNA. In the absence of ligand, these proteins recruit co-repressor complexes and repress transcription of the downstream genes. When ligand binds, however, the ligand binding domain undergoes a conformational change that enables it instead to recruit a coactivator complex, which activates transcription of the downstream genes. The very direct effect of ligand binding on transcription has made it possible to design drugs that have potent effects on nuclear receptor signaling pathways. One class of drugs known as selective oestrogen receptor modulators, which includes drugs such as tamoxifen, are highly successful in treating some types of breast cancer in which the tumour cells require oestrogen to pr proliferate. These drugs combine the ligand binding domain of oestrogen receptor in place of oestradiol. However, the different molecular structure of these drugs prevents the ligand binding domain from adopting its normal oestrogen-bound conformation. The altered protein conformation in the presence of the drug prevents oestrogen receptor from recruiting the coactivator complex, thereby blocking activation of oestrogen-responsive genes and preventing cell proliferation.